long story short, I was supposed to preach twice last month, but then something came up. I had to do, I had to serve in a different department, and then, and then there was a guest. But you know, it's of course it's fine. It's a guest. I'd rather have the guest preach because when else will that guest come? You know, of course. But you know what? What I have today, it's like it's been a long time coming out. I was supposed to preach this sermon two weeks ago, but I feel like it's still, um, it'll still resonate with us today. But, you know, yeah, I had a, almost a month break. And this past Friday, like two days ago, like Temple, we have this thing called Student Wellness Day now, apparently, every fall semester. And pretty much this Student Wellness Day pretty much focuses on focuses on the, you know, the importance of, you know, like, students' mental health throughout the semester. You know, we're all stressed out with exams. I'm stressed out with exams. And, like, you know, homework and just busy schedules. And literally my my biochemistry professor, he was like, make sure you really take a break. Like, he told us at the end of class, make sure you really take a break and do the things you'd like to do. And... He even gave us permission. You know, you don't have to study that day. It's okay. I, you won't get in trouble by me. You know, I was like, bet. I mean, I wasn't planning to study, but <laughs> I'm sorry, mom, dad. <laughs> They're all gonna watch this later. <laughs> but you know, this idea of taking a break uh, and you know, just like resting, it it made me think of the idea of like you know, um, biblical rest to say, and you know, like in the Bible. God, you know, even if you know the famous verse after God created the heavens and the earth and everything in between, he took a break on the seventh day. And I feel like just from this verse alone, it, like, you know, God wants to emphasize the importance of taking a break once in a while, you know, on resting. And today we're going to, like, we're going to dive in and see why rest is so important and what the Bible say about it. And that's why the title of my sermon today is on sabbatical. Mm. I actually like that title. I, I had that for a while. I was like, when can I actually use it? Okay. Um, but yeah, so on sabbatical, if you're not familiar with the word sabbatical, it pretty much means, you know, to take a break from work. Sometimes it's paid. Sometimes it's not, depending on what where you work at or whatever it is. But... You know, like nowadays, I feel like it's more of a corporate type of word when it's originality. You know, the the word sabbatical has the root word Sabbath, which I'm pretty sure you guys have already heard before. And I actually have like, I have a slide that says the word Shabbat. Oh, okay. <laughs> we can say this word together. One, two, three. Shabbat. Okay. Make sure you don't spit to your neighbor once when you said that. Okay, but this word, it, you know, pretty much what it translates is to rest or to cease, you know, to stop working, to cease work, to take a break from your work. And, yeah, literally to just clock out from what you're doing and just stop working. But there's also another Hebrew word that I use in the original Hebrew scriptures that is also used for the word rest, and it's called you you really got to go to the back of your esophagus and just nuach. I think it's like that. that. At least that's what I looked up. But this word means to dwell or to settle. Now, yeah, the English translated word means to dwell or to settle. And, you know, this word nuach, it's uh, nuach and Shabbat has, you know, it's correlated to each other whereas this word nuach is different from you know just clocking out of your job or just taking a break but this sort of rest is more like you know sitting in front of a campfire with someone or you know just hanging out with the boys playing basketball going over to your grandparents house for the weekend you know that sort of rest that's you know very comfortable cozy type really laid back type of rest. And, 
why do I want us to know these words? Why, what's, the, you know, what's the significance of these words? Well, it's because as humans, we are so used to a rhythm of working, of hustling. You know, we're just always on that grind. The grind calls whether we want it or not, you know. But because I'm pretty sure we have felt restless you know, while on a long weekend or you still feel tired even though you took an eight-hour, you know, you had a good night sleep and it was like eight hours long. Maybe some of y'all are like 12 hours long and it's okay. Um, but this is because oftentimes we, it's easy to not prioritize a regular, proper, rhythmic time of rest, you know. And the Bible tells us that it is so important for us it is so important for us to work. And in fact, God, God knows this. You know, God, it, even in the Bible, it says that, you know, you should be hardworking people. But God also says that, you know, in the Bible, it also says that rest is just as important as work. In fact, God knows this, and he was the first to establish rest, which is my first point for today. God established rest. And, I don't know, I guess you guys can tell your neighbor God established rest or something. If you don't know whether to take a break or not or treat yourself this week, maybe this is your sign. God is telling you, maybe you can take that break. You know, you can take that rest. And let's actually open up to Genesis 2 and see how God established rest. Yeah. All right. Can we read these verses together? One, two, three. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and in everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God finished his work of creation, so he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. This is the count of the creation of the heavens and the earth. And that's it. Sorry. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I, I meant to end at that period, but verse 4 actually goes in to like another half a sentence for some reason, but it's okay. Um, yeah, this is the count of the creation of the heavens and the earth. Now, I feel like one thing that you guys might think immediately after reading this verse is, uh, why, why does God need rest? If God is such an all-powerful, mighty being, if he's, you know, really the end all and be all of everything why why does he need to rest you know it's interesting because the bible doesn't say that god rested because he was tired you know and you know just digging deeper into these verses it's actually because the bible tells us that god resting here he's in he's taking a break because he wants to enjoy what he's created he's finished his task and he rested to look over what he created and enjoy. And, you know, God doesn't get tired. You, you see verses that talk about, you know, God will never grow faint or weary and those sort of things. But I also like that one, one thing that stands out to me in these verses that God not only rested or established rest, but he also blessed this day of rest. And he also declared it as holy. Can everyone say holy? Holy. All right. I like making you guys say stuff. Okay. But not only our rest is our rest important, but our rest is also a blessing from God. You know, a godly established rest is blessed and holy, and this is Shabbat. Then you read a few verses ahead when God established the man and woman in the Garden of Eden. And, well, in Genesis 2.15, here God settled the man in Eden, and God actually dwelled with him and this is Nuach that word is so fun but yeah and actually this past month I've been spending a lot of time with my sister at home because my grandma was on vacation he was it uh, she was in Indo for for a month and you know usually when me and my sister hang out we're usually just being screenagers in the living room she's on TikTok I'm on YouTube, I guess, yeah, I'm on YouTube, like, you know, it's like we're chilling, we're in the same room, we're next to each other, but we're, if it's, it's like we're not present with each other, you know, 
Like it's, I, sometimes I talk to her, but it's more like, yo, what do you want to eat? <laughs> what do you want to get to eat? And, but like this past month, this past month, I have actually been, you know, just interacting with her more. I guess that's what siblings are supposed to do. Just talking to her more instead of just passively hanging out with her. And like one fun thing that, that we did was like, I remember I, I'm on fantasy with some of the boys this, this year for football. And I got my main man, Josh Allen for QB. Shout out, Josh Shiesty. Um, but yeah, so we, we were watching a Bills game, right? The Buffalo Bills game uh, one day. And she was like so interested in it. She was just watching like guys fighting for a ball and just like, you know, like, hey, what, what, what does that mean? What do those numbers mean? What, what is third and 22? Oh, it means the enemy team, you know, has 22 yards before they can get another, before they can get a first down and explain all that. But too much rules. I know you guys aren't here for that. And other times I learned that apparently she's not in her blue era anymore. She's in her pink era but that lasted like two weeks, and then now she's just wearing whatever color she has in the closet. <laughs> um, but, you know, why, why am I telling you guys this silly example and story? But maybe sometimes when we rest in the presence of God, it is like this. Our rest with God sometimes can be a passive sort of thing, maybe. And maybe during worship or service, it's easy to get distracted by our phones. Okay. <laughs> I was giving time for people that are on their phones to look up. Okay. <laughs> or, yeah, or those sort of things, you know. Maybe we were supposed to spend time with God. Maybe we are supposed to read the Bible, but our phones are, you know, we read our Bibles on our phones, and it's not on do not disturb. So we end up, you know, texting someone or going on Instagram or whatever it may be. But our rest with God isn't supposed to be passive. In fact, you know, it is our rest with God it's supposed to be both Shabbat, where we cease from outside distractions, and Nuach, where we actually dwell with God. And God leads by example also. As he rests from this work, as he rests from creation, Shabbat, he also dwells with man in the Garden of Eden. This is Nuach. So, you know, the first thing we learn, well, the first thing that I want us to learn about Rest is that God first established rest. And next, can we open up to Levit yeah, Levit Leviticus? Noach is like so much easier than Leviticus, but let's open up to Leviticus 25. Um, and can we read these words, these words, these verses together as I take a drink of water? <laughs> One, two, three. Do not plant your fields or prune your vineyards during that year. And don't store away the crops that grow on their own or gather the grapes from your unpruned vines. The land must have... You may eat whatever the land produces on its own during its Sabbath. This applies to you, your male and female servants, your hired workers, and the temporary residents who live with you. Your livestock and the wild animals in your land will also be allowed to eat what the land produces. Amen. Sorry. Um, I guess some context for these verses. This is um, this is about you know the um, the nation of Israel. They're currently they are still in the wilderness. They're um, still at um, the nation is still at the base of Mount Sinai. While Moses is talking, um, talking with God up at the top of the mountain. And, you know, God previous, previously told Moses that, you know, you guys as a nation should, should establish rest once a week. You know, the seventh day of the week will be declared Sabbath and is holy. But in, in these next verses, God is also establishing a Sabbath year, you know. For some of you guys, this might be like, what, am I supposed to, like, rest for a whole year? And that's not really the case because I, I don't think 
it would be good for any of us to just not do anything for a whole year. Um, but in these verses, God's commands for the Israelites is to have a Sabbath year so that the land can have rest. You know, this means no one can tend the land or aid it. So whatever the land produces will be the food that they eat. And I guess for my second point for today is that Sabbath is a lifestyle. Can we say that together? One, two, three. Sabbath is a lifestyle. You know, for the Israelites observing the Sabbath year, it's, it's also a powerful testimony for the nation, you know, that they are willing to truly depend on God rather than, you know, working the land every day to, to make ends meet, to get their food, to get their next provision. And in this way, they declare their belief that God would meet their needs, you know, by, you know, practicing the Sabbath year. And I, I think what these verses are saying as well, it's that this is truly living what living by faith is actually like, you know. And God wanted his people to live trusting him. And I, I will agree, though, that, you know, maybe having a regular rhythm of rest in our lives is very hard just because, you know, we, we have, you know, things come up. You know, we have, you know, a lot of assignments maybe to do one week or maybe we have to pick up that work shift one day because, you know, a different, um, a coworker called out or whatever it may be. Um, but I feel like it's not impossible. Now, you know, as a biochem major, I, <laughs> other than learning about, metabolism again and biology and cells and those sort of things I, I, I like to look at data right I, I like to look at data and I feel like you know it's help it's very helpful to you know to learn about the things that I'm studying when there's data and like oh yeah oh okay there's a lot of cells in here and molecules whatever maybe I'm just yapping but at this point but okay <laughs> but actually research you know I researched, I did some homework for, a bit more homework for uh, the sermon, and I researched some data about, you know, work life in the U.S. that maybe could, you know, put some things into perspective for us to just, like, you know, how important having rest is. And, in fact, the study conducted in 2023, you know, it concluded that USA is the number five most workaholic country in the whole world, with number one being Japan. You know, 77% of Americans who work full-time, they have experienced burnouts at their jobs, and nearly almost every millennial left a job specifically because they feel burned out. And, you know, it's not just the long hours, but also the fact that Americans are constantly thinking about work and career development. What's the next big thing that I got to do? What's the, what's the next step that I got to take to, you know, keep furthering myself? Now, of course, the motivation uh, behind working a lot can be different for everyone, right? For some of us, maybe, you know, we just want to keep getting that, you know, keep maintaining that 3.5 GPA that we've been having. I believe that's A's, B plus, and A's, 3.5, I don't know. Um, and maybe for some of you guys, it's education, but maybe for some of you guys, you work those long hours to make ends meet, you know? And of course, the Bible says that it's very good to be hardworking, but we sh and in fact, we should be hardworking individuals. And I can tell you guys that, I think you guys are hardworking people. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but as Christians, we should not worship our work more than we worship our God. You know, maybe we put all those hours into what we study or what we what we work on, but, you know, have, have we spent time with God today? Have we spent time with God this week, maybe? And, you'll, and, you know, living a Sabbath lifestyle means that we believe that God will meet our ends as well, will meet our needs as well. Because rest is found inside of our trust in God. Now, my second point is that Sabbath is a lifestyle, right? And although not always easy to follow, the, com the commands God laid out for, our, for his people were straightforward and simple. 
But, you know, as humans, we tend to, you know, to kind of twist maybe some of the things that, that we hear. And, you know, in fact, by the time Jesus walked the earth, religious leaders and, you know, other priests, they layered on so many rules and restrictions on how to rest, on how to actually practice Sabbath, that it became, that Sabbath became more stressful and confusing than it is enjoyable, you know. It became that, you know, we, that they were missing the point of why God established rest in the first place. Um, so can we actually open up to Mark 2, verses 23 to 28? Yep. And can we just read these verses together as well? One, two, three. As Jesus was walking through some grain fields. Look, why are they breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them, haven't you ever read into... He went into the house of God during the days when Abiathar was priest and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests are allowed to eat. He also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. Amen. And this actually brings me to my final point that Jesus is the Lord of Sabbath, the Lord over Sabbath. And, you know, I really like how Jesus made it plain and simple. You know, Sabbath was to meet the needs of the people and not for us to meet the needs of the Sabbath. The thing about the Pharisees is that they misinterpreted the purpose of the Sabbath, that it was, you know, it was a thing that they have to do to please God, where in fact, Sabbath is a thing that we get to do. You know, um, I'm not sure if you guys know this, and maybe a lot of you guys actually know this, but before we actually started having AGC down here in this chapel, we used to have it upstairs at 12 p.m., I think before pandemic, we used to have it, like, in the evening, like, around 5 p.m. And, you know, I, I remember that these services, you know, we had people helping out with the cameras, people doing lights, people doing, um, you know, everything in the back. And then we got, you know, we got, like, seven dri- different um seven different instruments at the front and we're just like you know it's a full team it's it's really cool we got cool lights we got cool music and all that but one one of the problems that we realized uh you know from having the service upstairs is that not a lot of people could actually come it's one of the downsides uh because you know a lot of us maybe we we come here with our parents at 10 and then you know when your parents leave, you guys got to leave too. And, you know, that's definitely, that's very understandable. But I feel like the thing is, it felt like we did give our best to serve and minister every Sunday, but there was no one to minister to, you know. Uh, I feel like maybe for some of us back then, but at least for me, I, if I felt like I missed the point of what the, church community is you know I felt like I missed the point that the church community needs people in that community as well like you know we can we can give our best we can you know put our heart and soul into everything but at the end of the day if you know if it's not the it it defeats the purpose when when you know when God is in the middle of it sorry if that was like a bit convoluted but you know, we missed the point that the church community needed people in that community too. Same thing with the Pharisees here. The Pharisees rely on their own works and rule keeping to get close to God. In fact, God's laws reveals our need for him. It is his mercy and love that fulfill our deepest needs. Um, Can I actually ask the worship team to come up? And, you know, I, I feel like at least for me, for a long time in my Christian walk, 
I felt that, you know, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to serving. Like, if one example, I guess, is like maybe if we we do a song for, for the week, if we do a new song, we have to do it exactly as, you know, as how it is recorded originally on YouTube or whatever, you know. But I feel like, you know, of, of course God, you know, God calls us to come as we are. We don't need to be perfect. Of course, we should strive to be, to be just like Jesus. But when it gets to the point where, you know, our own works is more important than God works, God's works, then we're completely missing the point on God's gospel, on God's good news, on God's grace and his love and the main reason why he went up on that cross. Can we actually, well, I guess to recap the points, right? First, God established rest. And second, Sabbath is a lifestyle. And finally, you know, Jesus is the Lord over the Sabbath. And can we actually read Mark 2, verses 27 to 28 once more? Um, I'll read this. And it says here that, uh, then Jesus said to them, Jesus said to the Pharisees, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people and not people to meet their requirements of the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. You know, maybe, I don't know for some of you guys or maybe um, for some of us, we, you know, maybe right now we feel like we're burnt out. You know, we are in October. It's still a few months to go until the end of the year. But maybe, you know, God, God is, God wants us to take a break. You know, maybe for some of us, it's hard for us to take a break because, you know, it's counterproductive. And for me, I, I feel like that as well. And I, you know, I'm not too much of a workaholic, but I try to, you know, I, I just strive for perfection in all things. But God is actually, but as much as God wants us to be hardworking people, God also invites us to rest once in a while, to rest in Him. And, you know, that's not just mindlessly scrolling on TikTok for six hours a day or just, you know, just mind-numbingly watching the next good Netflix show. But the rest that God wants us to have is both Shabbat where we get rid of all of our distractions and also Nuach when we also dwell with God. Can I actually invite everyone to stand up and